Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqeel. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today attended the Royal Academy of Police graduation ceremony to honor the 10th batch of candidate officers. His Royal Highness recognized the important role security officers play in protecting the safety of Bahrain and its people, stressing that their professionalism remains a key component of Bahrain's development for success, driven by His Majesty King Hamad's comprehensive development program. His Royal Highness congratulated the Minister of Interior on the graduation ceremony, noting Bahrain's pride and security officers' unwavering commitment and the sacrifices they continue to make to protect the country. His Royal Highness went on to extend his best wishes to all graduating officers and stressed that the rule of law, human rights and modern practices must continue to underpin every aspect of their role in protecting the country and its citizens. His Royal Highness was accompanied by his son, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and was welcomed by the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and other senior officers from the Ministry of Interior. السلام الوطني سلام Prior to the Graduate Officers Commissioning Parade, His Royal Highness inspected the Officer Cadets Parade. الأكاديمية الملكية للشرطة تقدم بهيئة الاستعراض بنظام الفصائل من اليمين معتدل سر
The Minister of Interior gave remarks at the graduation ceremony highlighting the role of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in supporting the Ministry of Interior and its objectives. The Ministry of Interior also affirmed the Ministry's commitment to continue advancing police capabilities and skill sets through modern policing and law enforcement programs. The Ministry of Interior stressed that advancing security capabilities remains a priority to meet current complex challenges. The Ministry of Interior concluded by extending his gratitude to his, rather his Royal Highness the Crown Prince for attending the graduation ceremony. The Chief of Public Security and Chairman of the Scientific Council of the Royal Academy of Police, Major General Tariq Al Hassan, highlighted the extensive training and development programs undertaken by the graduating officers. The Major General outlined the modern training techniques inform every aspect of the Academy's development programs, which incorporate internationally recognized law enforcement and human rights best practices. Major General Tariq Al Hassan concluded by emphasizing his Majesty's recognition of the vital role played by security officers in safeguarding the security and stability of the country.
وعمليات التهريب وتمويل الإرهاب والتصدي للتدخلات الأجنبية Then the officer cadets took their oath. أقسم بالله العظيم. أقسم بالله العظيم. أقسم بالله العظيم. أن أكون وفيا للبحرين. أمينا على حقوقها. مخلصا لمليكها المفدى مطيعا لجميع الاوامر الحقه التي تصدر الي من رؤسائي محافظا على شرفي وسلاحي مؤديا اعمال وظيفتي بالصدق والامانه محترما قوانين البلاد وحقوق الناس والله على ما أقول شهيد التلميذ العسكري أحمد حمد عيسى الصقر وقد حصل على الأول في المجموع العام مع مرتبة الشرف His Royal Highness and honored the Academy's top achievers التلميذ العسكري محمد فواز محمد المعايطة مبتعث من المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية الشقيقة وقد حصل على الثاني في المجموع العام مع مرتبة الشرف التلميذ العسكري عباد وليد عبد الله هجرس وقد حصل على الثالث في المجموع العام مع مرتبة الشرف التلميذ العسكري أحمد عدنان أحمد الشامسي وقد حصل على جائزة القيادة التلميذ العسكري سليمان يوسف عبد الله السعودي مبتعث من دولة الكويت الشقيقة وقد حصل على جائزة الرماية التلميذ العسكري علي عبد الله يوسف جناحي وقد حصل على جائزة المشاة وأخيرا التلميذ العسكري عبد الرحمن خالد خليل إبراهيم وقد حصل على جائزة التربية البدنية
The graduates saluted His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the parade left the field. سيدنا سموكم انصرف طابور سيدي الأكاديمية الملكية للشرطة إلى الداخل شر مجموعة العلم واعتدل شر
A number of officers from the Ministry of Interior and the academic faculty of the Royal Police Academy greeted His Royal Highness expressing thanks and appreciation for his patronage of the event and his directives that aim at developing security. The Minister of Interior went on to award commissioning certificates to the officer cadets, wishing them success in their future endeavors. Military students are the protectors of the homeland and the preservers of the kingdom's security, and this generation has a bright future in enforcing security of Bahrain and safeguarding it against terrorism. Everything is in the hand of Allah, and we would gladly sacrifice the lives of our children for the homeland. If we were young and strong, we would have given more to Bahrain. I myself have served in hospitals. May Allah give us strength, along with our brothers and the police, to protect this country. He was eager to be in the military, and we supported him, especially that his brother, may Allah rest his soul, was a pilot in the military. We cannot express our emotions as we are celebrating National Day, praise be to God. On this occasion, we would like to congratulate His Majesty the King, their Royal Highnesses, the Prime Minister and the Crown Prince, as well as the Bahraini people, praying for the prevalence of security and safety, as we are proud that our children are in the military. First of all, we thank our King, the Prime Minister and the Crown Prince for selecting these cadets. The past four years were really difficult and today I couldn't see through the tears in my eyes. My son is Mohammed Muharib. Thanks to Allah he has graduated and four years have passed. The people of Bahrain did their best and the event was very well organized. We don't consider our son left Kuwait. We regard him as being in his second home. Therefore, he did not feel like a stranger. First of all, I congratulate him on this achievement and wish him further success. The Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, participated in the summit of the Heads of Arab Parliament in the extraordinary session which was held in Morocco. The Speaker of the Representative Council conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and stressed Bahrain's support to the Palestinian people and their right to establish their own independent state on the borders of the 4th of June 1967 with Jerusalem as its capital. And Mullah delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the U.S. declaration of its recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is an unprecedented provocation in the region 
describing it as a wrong decision that targets the peace process in the Middle East. He rejected the U.S. decision and warned of its repercussions, calling on the Interparliamentary Union, the U.S. Congress and the European Parliament and other unions and institutions to take more serious measures against the U.S. administration's decision. He valued the efforts of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdelaziz al Saud, to support the rights of Palestinians and defend their issues. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the Moroccan monarch and the chairman of the Al-Quds Committee, King Mohammed VI, for his outstanding role in addressing the United Nations regarding Jerusalem. The representative speaker also thanked all countries, particularly the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, for their continued contribution to the Palestinian people. Mazad announced today that it will conduct the second edition of its online private vehicle number plates auction in cooperation with Arabian Auction to be held on Thursday, December 21st. Mazad CEO Talal Araf Al Arafi said that registration for the auction will be next Thursday at 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. at the auction site. Al Arafi said the plate numbers for the auction are of the new categories starting from 610000 and 620000. He noted that the auction, which is managed and organized in partnership with the Arabiya auction as part of the cooperation agreement signed between the two companies, is in line with the standards of transparency and the participation for all. This event comes after the success achieved for the first public auction, as well as achieving excellence and good management and organization. The mechanism for the next auction will be announced in the coming period. Mazad is the latest company established under the umbrella a Bahrain's holding company, Mumtalikat, and works to organize and manage auctions in cooperation with Al Arabiya Auction Company. The Embassy of Bahrain in Riyadh held a celebration on the occasion of the National Day in commemoration of the establishment of the modern state of Bahrain as an Arab and Muslim country in 1783 by its founder Ahmed al fatih the 46th anniversary of his accession to the UN as a full member and the 18th anniversary of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa's accession to the throne. The Governor of Riyadh region, Prince Faisal bin Bandar al Saud, attended the ceremony held by the Ambassador of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Governor of Riyadh congratulated the leadership and the people of Bahrain on the occasion. He affirmed the deep-rooted relation between the leadership and people of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, which are based on strong fraternal and historical ties. He praised the achievements of the Kingdom under its leadership, noting the role of Bahrain in strengthening Gulf cooperation in Arab and Islamic solidarity as well as its keenness on maintaining the region's stability and development. For his part, the Bahraini ambassador to Saudi Arabia expressed thanks and appreciation to the governor of Riyadh, the ministers and the ambassadors for attending the ceremony. Bahrain begins its celebrations of the national holidays under the comprehensive developments enjoyed by the kingdom in all fields. A huge national flag was displayed today on the Ark Capita building along with a festival in Bahrain Bay. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. National Day celebrations were held today in Bahrain Bay, creating an amazing atmosphere with entertaining bands playing great national music and a huge national flag displayed on the Al Capita building. A business center, uh, most of the people are out of their offices enjoying uh, the happiness and this nice, nice event. As you wander around and see that uh, uh, the atmosphere is at a high level of, uh, of happiness. The festival gathered the employees from different companies working in the building and their families along with visitors to enjoy the great spirit. All of the employees in the building in a beautiful location where people can enjoy and celebrate National Day together with their families because some people have brought their children and their sisters and brothers. So I think it's, it's a, a day to be happy and to celebrate what is a proud day for our nation. Creative activities attracted different age groups to enjoy the positive vibes and display their love to the kingdom, such as an open platform for socialization, fun area for the kids to play, and tools for people to paint and participate in a competition for the best National Day painting. 
painting for the National Day. Combined celebration between all the tenants of our capital building, primarily Mumtalekat, our capital, um, Usul, Amlak, EDB, uh, and Idama. The event is organized very well and happy to be here. It's a very nice celebration. Everyone is happy, everyone is enjoying their time. Moreover, there were live performances of craftsmen creating great national products and Bahraini women cooking local food to the visitors. It's really nice. Everybody is enjoying their time. Uh, we're happy. Uh, I would like to wish a happy National Day to all Bahrainis. First time that the whole of the tenants of the Our Capital Building have come together in a joint celebration of Bahrain National Day. And I think that really just demonstrates the spirit of what National Day in Bahrain should, is all about. Very important occasion for all. All of Bahrain, Bahrainis and non-Bahrainis are celebrating this event equally. I say from the Saudi people to the Bahraini people about the National Day, um, Alf Alf Mabruk, happy, happy National Day. I wish you guys all peace, uh, love, and um, I would love to come here next year again. It's a very nice event. Happy National Day. I love Bahrain. An exhibition displaying beautiful pieces of art and paintings reflecting the Bahraini culture was also a part of the celebration. The festival was full of happiness, innovation, entertainment and deep love to Bahrain. Amazing spirit and cheerful National Day celebrations by our capita bring employees together with their families to celebrate and enjoy. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffour. The Kingdom of Bahrain's banking system consists of both conventional and Islamic banks and is the largest component of the financial system, accounting for over 85% of financial assets. Bahrain is a regional banking hub successfully attracting numerous foreign banking organizations to establish a physical presence in the country. More in this report with Shog Mohammed. The Kingdom of Bahrain has solidified its reputation as the indisputable compass for the global Islamic finance and banking industry, building a robust platform that comprises of leading bankers, institutional investors, asset managers, policy makers, academics and other stakeholders from across the region. There's been uh, an increase in demand for the last, uh, over the last 20-30 years in, uh, in demand, global demand for financial assets uh, which, which are Sharia compliant. Uh, and uh, people who want to invest these funds look at the different options and Bahrain is an attractive one because first of all its location it's very close to many other important regional uh, commercial centers such as the UAE such as Saudi Arabia uh, secondly it has a very open uh, uh, and, uh, and well regulated banking sector the Central Bank of Bahrain um, has a very good system for ensuring that the banks operate in a responsible way, um, which is, serves both their interests and the interests of uh, the people investing. And thirdly, Bahrain is, uh, is geared up to attract foreign capital. The, uh, first of all, the, uh, um, the EDB does an excellent job of making it very simple for people to uh, bring their capital to Bahrain. And secondly, the people, most importantly, uh, are very welcoming to, uh, to foreigners and make them feel that they can be part of Bahrain's culture. Another major component of Bahrain's banking sector is foreign direct investment, which the kingdom has a uniquely attractive environment for. Well, if you take the example of uh, the banking sector, which now accounts for almost say, for somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of our economy and a very good proportion of the jobs, um, much of that is, is foreign direct investment. It's foreign banks who uh, come and invest in Bahrain and create jobs, um, not as an act of charity because they make money from it as well. And it's, a, it's an arrangement that suits all sides. Um, and we're actually very proud to not only have a lot of jobs created from HDI, there's a very high Bahrainization rate. The banking sector is always, uh, I think it's something almost 70%, if not more, Bahrainization rate. So we don't even need the regulations on Bahrainization because uh, it's a sector which, uh, which Bahrainis are very well educated in and, uh, and uh, contribute at an international level. Within the past decade, Bahrain has generated over $10 billion worth of FDI and several hundreds of millions in 2017 alone. There are current plans in place to further increase foreign direct investment in cooperation with a number of ministries and organizations in the kingdom. In the Middle East uh, and in the world, Bahrain is in the middle. 
uh, um, in the Gulf region. It has good uh, transport links. It has good uh, infrastructure links to all the uh, other countries uh, around. Uh, there, there's a new airport um, that will be ready soon, so it's it's very well connected. There's a new causeway that's going to be built linking us to Saudi. Uh, secondly, the regularity framework um, uh, suits people who want to foreigners who want to invest. Uh, I mentioned that 10 million plus dollars that have been come in. That's because uh, Bahrain makes it relatively easily for, for foreign investors to put their capital here. So that's something which attracts Amazon. And thirdly, I'll, I'll go back to the most important, which is the important part, which is the people. Uh, people make it uh, a nice place to live. This year, part of the reason for the big surge in, in FDI is Amazon uh, uh, deciding to house its servers uh, and, to, uh, and to become uh, a regional player with Bahrain as its launch pad. Um, that's part of a wider strategy to develop Bahrain's technology industry, uh, and that's going to dovetail with the financial industry in what's called fintech. Um, so there are um, many uh, efforts uh, by the different organizations, such as the EDB, such as the Ministry of Indus, Industry, Commerce and, and Trade, and Tourism, excuse me, to, uh, to work together to attract different types of industry which work either in, well independently and complement the financial sector. The National Day is an occasion that marks another step in the development of the kingdom under the wise leadership and the continuation of advances in the coming years. I hope for a prosperous 2018. Bahrain uh, uh, is a country uh, that is blessed with a very uh, uh, supportive and cooperative population. Uh, for, inshallah, everybody can keep working together uh, to realize the aspirations of uh, all components of society, um, Bahrainis and non-Bahrainis who are all Welcome to Bahrain and, uh, uh, and people of all uh, colors and races and nationalities. With 2018 approaching, the Kingdom of Bahrain will continue to be a leader for the region's Islamic financial institutions and will generate further FDI. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed. Temkin announced a 2018-2020 strategy today during its annual consultation forum, attended by more than 500 participants representing different economic sectors. The forum was an essential platform of communication with the different sectors to further discuss visions and thoughts aimed at improving the development process of Temkin's programs and initiatives. The consultation forum aimed at highlighting the key milestones achieved during the 2015-2017 strategy cycle paving the way for the introduction of the 2018-2020 strategy with a new key focus of devising sustainable solutions that will remain relevant in tomorrow's economy. The development of the strategy looked into the results of a number of research and studies aimed at assessing the status of the labor market and ways to address its specific needs and gaps. We've gone through an evolution in Temkin, trying to refine and improve everything that we've been working on, including all our flagship schemes, and we're trying to make things easier and simpler for the public and the customers that we have. Uh, it's very important for us to make our products and services accessible and meet the needs and requirements of our, our stakeholders, which is the private sector. As a result, what we're trying to do is trying to continuously improve the, the way we deliver our product services, make things more efficient and simpler, but at the same time, we just want to scale up and do more of things. A lot of things we want to focus on, we want to increase our attention towards training and development, uh, work with the private sector, engage them as partners. I think it's a very effective way because they bring the industry, they bring us to discuss how we are benefiting from Temkin programs, what are the things which we want to develop and improve, and I think they really take it seriously to go and in the kitchen, as I call it, to see how they can develop more programs for enterprises like ours to benefit from Temkin. <laughs>